This is a Broom 425, it's a 2010 example, and these are a really nice boat for doing a little bit of extended cruising for various reasons, which I will explain to you. But we'll start on the outside here. One thing I do like is this dark blue hull that this one's got. That looks really smart. Don't often see that on these, but it looks good. It's an aft cabin layout, so really good accommodation. But also, look how low these sides are here. It's a really easy boat to step on. If you want to get into the side of it, you can see, in fact, there's a step in the hull just there. I can put my foot into that very easily and then step up onto here. Obviously, these unclip. But what we're going to do is we're going to go on at the stern so that I can show you the entire boat. This has got a davit system on it, so you see these little fellows here. That cantilever is it hinges down there, and it means it hinges out and drops this tender into the water, all nice and easy. Bathing platform, as you can see underneath it, and there's a boarding ladder down there as well. And those hatches there are for the aft cabin. As I say, it is an aft cabin layout, and that means full length accommodation. It's really good. We'll go on board, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So. We step on here, that's the controls for those Simpson Davits that we just looked at on the back. And this then takes us in to the cockpit. Now, what is great about these is it's not a flybridge boat. You've got the aft deck here, but the helm is on the aft deck as well. You don't go up steps and onto a flybridge. Now, that gives you slightly less space, but it brings a couple of advantages. First of all, it makes this much more sheltered. You won't get this big high windscreen and this canopy normally on a flybridge boat. And what that means is that this is the only helm on the boat and that frees up a lot of space inside. You'll see that in a minute. And they've been quite clever with the way that they've used this because you've got seating around here, as you can see, but these helm seats slide back. So you've got the three seats here. You just lift them a bit like a car and slide them back like that. So when you're underway, you can drop those seats back on back as well. And when you are stopped, you can bring them forward and have more seating here. So that's a nice idea. The other thing that you've got up here, incidentally, is if you look underneath here, there is a sink and there is a barbecue under there, which looks like it's never been used, actually. It's very clean. That's the tap down underneath there. And there's a fridge there as well. So this area is all nicely catered for. And as I say, very sheltered. But another key element of this boat is this arch, because this arch is actually powered. That's why it's got that big red stop button there. So it will hinge. You unclip these feathers here, and it powers down. You can see the hinge at the back. And that lowers the air draft. And that, because it's also a reasonably narrow boat for its length, means that it's a great boat for inland cruising. So you want to go to the River Thames, you want to take it down through the French canals, drop the arch down, and away you go. Fantastic for getting under bridges. And it really opens up the cruising grounds of these because it's a very capable sea boat. But if you thought, let's do the French canals and take it right the way down through France to the Med, well, then this is the sort of thing you could do it in. Let's go and have a look inside. Now, because it only has the one helm station, it means you're not putting a helm down here, and that means you get a lot more space. So a very nice social area, and there's even a nice armchair over on this side, which I rather like the look of. They put a big TV in here as well. Again, it's going back to what I was saying, it's the sort of thing that you would perhaps spend some serious time on here. If you're into your cruising, maybe you're retired and you're saying, let's buy a motorboat and head off for you know, six months through the summer. This is the sort of boat that would be brilliant for it. Very manageable for two people, but a ton of space on board and a lot of facilities. Over here, this is storage mostly all the way along here like this. And then if we head on forward, we drop down to the lower deck. And this one has got the galley here. It's gas cooking. So you've got a gas oven and grill there. And you've got the gas hob underneath there. Twin sinks. There is a microwave as well. And then there is a fridge over here. And a load more storage in places like this down underneath here, down underneath here, and so forth. If we go right to the front, that incidentally is for all of your plates, your crockery is in there. So plates, cups, sorters, all that sort of stuff. And up here is the guest cabin. Now this is really nice because it's an aft cabin configuration and the owner's cabin is right aft. There's a lot of privacy. Your guests are at the other end of the boat to you, which is fantastic. There is an infill for this, so you can make this a double bed if you want to, but it's two singles. It gives you a load more floor space, which is nice. There is hanging lockers in here, like so. And in fact, I think those are the infill cushions.
to infill this area to a double and then a lot more storage over on this side uh, underneath the beds so a nice guest cabin but it's not the only guest cabin because if we come back here we'll discover that there's a third cabin so that has got bunk beds in as you can see and again hanging locker and so forth nice cabin nice windows we're in Limington at the minute there we go quick look at Limington in the sunshine so three cabin configuration but your guests as I say they're all up this end of the boat and then the day heads is up here as well so that is there in fact it's en suite straight through to the forward cabin so that is also a nice touch there is the toilet in there and there's a shower in here as well and the sink and then this has got a bit of storage in behind it like so so that is the forward lower deck but i keep talking about that aft cabin let's go and have a look at it I will pause briefly here because there is space here and there was a washing machine but this only swapped it out for another fridge which again if you're cruising is quite a nice idea but if you preferred a washing machine I'm sure that could be swapped back and then here's the owner's cabin really nice I love the woodwork in here actually it's a bit lighter than you often find on a broom it's quite contemporary and the high gloss finish looks really really good um, we have got in here if I pull that one over there's a, a 4x3 TV, you don't see many of those anymore. I think that'd be the first thing I would swap, and that wouldn't take too much difficulty. And then toilet is in here. And the wash basin, and again, storage in behind in places like this. And a load of storage all the way around here. This is the sort of thing, as I was mentioning earlier, if you want to spend some time on a boat, this is a great boat to do it on. And those are those hatches that we saw from outside under the tender. So you've got a lovely view out, out across the water. How about that? Proper waterside living, isn't it? And they open as well for ventilation. Obviously, you need to make sure they're closed at sea. And you can curtain them off like so. Load more storage on this side. You might wonder where the shower is. I didn't point out the shower. And that is because that's in here. Pull a little. There we go. It's a bit full of gear at the moment because the boat's not actually in use. So paddles for the tender and other bits and pieces but that's the shower in there you can see it in fact just there so that's great again spending some time on the boat the ability to have a completely separate shower and toilet that is a nice feature turn that one back off and then more storage over here that's a really good hanging knocker actually isn't it and some of the switch gear is in here as well tucked away it's not a real cat, I promise. <laughs> I can't help giving it a tickle there. Hello, little cat. <laughs> okay, am I joking? Here we go. <laughs> Engines. Engines are under the floor here. Now, you can get these steps up and get to the back of them. You can also get this carpet up and get panels up. But these are quite cunning because what these do is just give you access to the top of them. So, if I lift that up gently against there, what this does... Is give you access to things like the dipsticks the oil filler the header so just for doing your daily checks this is really good there's another one of course for the other engine over there these are a pair of d6 330s so 330 horsepower straight six turbo diesels she's shaft drive the generator is in there as well you can just see it tucked away up underneath there and that's going to give the boat i'm going to guess a top speed mid 20s would be my my best guess um, and cruising there for you know high teens maybe 20 knots would be pretty comfortable but as I say that's a way to get to them for a quick check if you want to do more like servicing well then you remove the carpet and you get a lot more up it's nice isn't it let's have a wander around the decks
Another thing I like about this boat is you can step out here and it's got really great deck access. There's a rail here to help you around and rails all the way around the outside as well. You can see this goes all the way up here. This slopes gently downwards and that is that side access that I pointed out just before we got onto the boat. So really easy if you're somewhere where it's a short pontoon and you can't get on the back, really easy to step straight onto there. More rails up here. Then you're up to the foredeck. These round fellows are vents. That's what those are. That's the hatch above the forward cabin. Nice flat foredeck, electric anchor winch. And these are buttons for it. They have covers on them so that nobody treads on them by mistake and sends the anchor winch down. And the anchor, of course, is on the front. And these are fender baskets. So you can pull your fenders up and just pop them in there out of the way. You don't have to drag them back and find homes for them. We come right on round. This is what I mean about the way that you can walk so easily all the way around this boat and it's great when you're maneuvering particularly again in rivers and places like that where you might need to get to both sides to get fenders out because you're going to locks really good and then back here to the stern to that tender and back into the cockpit again and that as they say is that very interesting boat. I hope you've enjoyed that one. Do let me know what you think. Huge thanks to Berthon in Livington. They're the guys that organise the tour. I'll put details to them in the description. And huge thanks as ever to you guys for watching. We'll catch you on another one of these very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.